Hi, I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. Uh, welcome to All Things LGBTQ. It's Tuesday, uh, October 3rd. 3rd. <laughs> and we are taping in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as unceded indigenous land. Unfortunately, Keith can't be here with us today, so it's Linda and me. Take it away, Linda. All right. On the top of our things, as <clears throat> I just heard on the way here, is that McCarthy has lost his seat. Uh-huh. He's been voted out. So what happens now? I don't know. But the other breaking news is, is that California Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom has chosen a lesbian and radical pro-abortion, on-demand, pro-LGBTQ activist, Laponza Butler, <clears throat> who lives in Maryland, <clears throat> to fill the Senate seat left vacant by Senator Dianne Feinstein, <clears throat> who died Thursday, Thursday at the age of 90. Butter heads up the leading pro-abortion PAC political action committee, Emily's List, which boasts on its website, at Emily's List, we work to elect Democratic pro-choice women up and down the ballot and across the country with the goal of fighting for our rights and our communities. <clears throat> Butler also registers another first in the wor world of left-wing intersectionality and liberal media causes celebrate. To quote Newsom, she will make history becoming the first black lesbian to openly serve in the U.S. Senate. The left base, um, Butler confirms that her child is being raised in a same-sex household that is in, uh, intentionally fatherless. Mm -hmm. Butler is lesbian. She and her partner, Naniki Lee, have a daughter. They moved to Maryland in 2021 when she assumed the presidency of Emily's List. Governor Newsom's office stated, Butler will register to vote in California be take, before taking office as a senator. And here's her picture. Well, I wonder if there's going to be pushback because she lives in Maryland. Well, I think she has, she she was in California. Uh -huh. So maybe she still has a house there or something. I don't know. but That's great news. Yes. Though. I wondered that too myself. But And on <clears throat> a sad note, a Philadelphia journalist and activist, Josh Kruger, a gay man was shot to death early Monday at his home in Philadelphia. Police were called to Kruger's neighborhood around 1.30 a.m. Uh, he had seven gunshot wounds in his chest and abdomen and had um, collapsed on the sidewalk outside his house. Police believe Kruger was shot in his house and went outside to get help. He was taken to Penn Pest. Presbyterian Medical Center where he died about 2.15 a.m. He was 39. Do they have any idea? No, nothing yet. <clears throat> That's awful. Okay. I'm going to save this one in case I get a chance to do it later because it's not really. It's about the Pope, so. Oh, no. I know. So we'll leave that for now. Um. Former Anaheim City Councilman Jordan Bradman, who became the city's first out gay council member after he was first elected in 2012, was also found dead at his home Friday night. Officials said police responded to Brandman's home about 7.45 p.m. after receiving a request for a welfare check. According to the statement from the city, officials <coughs> found the 43-year-old Bradman unresponsive. There was no signs of foul play, but the cause of death remains under investigation. Officials said it was with sorrow and sadness that we learned of the passing of former council member Brandon Brandman. Anaheim Mayor Ashley Aitken said in the news release, any loss of life in our city is a tragedy. And my heart goes out to all who knew Jordan and who are now coping with the news of his passing. And here's a picture of him. Outside of San Francisco City Hall, several U.S. flags were at half staff in <coughs> memoriam Friday 
for the state for the late Senator Diane Feinstein. Inside, a blue and yellow floor arrangement was gently tucked in the left arm of a bus of a smiling Feinstein erected outside the mayor's office. Outside Feinstein's hilly home in the city's Pacific Heights neighborhood, a makeshift memorial of yellow, pink, and white flowers began to accumulate, and in the city's Castro district, a historic haven for LGBT plus community. Mourners reflected and celebrated the pioneering politician who passed away Thursday night. Um, and she was well respected and known as an ally and longtime champion for LGBTQ rights. I'll never forget her coming and talk, telling the press that Harvey Milk had been assassinated. I'll never forget seeing her sworn in in San Francisco oh. mm -hmm. when I arrived there two weeks after Harvey Milk's death. Mm. Um, so the city, I arrived to a city in uproar. And grieving, probably. And now I'm going to have a movie clip, but I'm going to give you a little <clears throat> synopsis of the movie. Hillary Clinton helped Nicole Payon become a film director. And while the revered presidential candidate is a far cry from the morally compromised art dealer at the center of Payoni's new film, The Kill Room. They're both strong, resourceful women. The type of women whose stories uh, the out director seeks to tell. The Kill Room, which opened in theaters Friday, stars Uma Thurman as Patrice Forma, Anna Himes, uh, let me see. Oh, yeah. Uh, and um, Patrice <coughs> Capullo, a glamorous but broke New York gallery owner who can't get through the day without some Adderall. She's desperate for cash and for a way to attract wealthy customers. She finds both when, through her drug dealer, she meets Gordon Davis, Samuel L. Jackson, a baker with connections to organized crime. <clears throat> and she needs money for her gallery, so here we go, and here is the... Should you be out there trying to make a sale? Don't judge me. It helps with my anxiety. Usually the drugs come out at the after party, not at the opening. There's no one here but friends and deadbeats. Any collectors coming? Many have shown interest. Any sales? The gallery is going through some changes. My math sucks, but I know half of zero is zero. We're a team, right? We need to find a new way to deal with the money. I suggest the art. This thing that looks like a Smurf wiped his ass with it can sell for a million bucks. I give you the piece, and I give you the money for it and everything will be clean. I need something to sell. I will call my guy, have him grab his brushes, and whip something up. What's the artist's name? Bagman. The Bagman. Haven't seen you at any of the events. Was under the impression the gallery wasn't doing well. She just closed this deal on a painting from The Bagman. At? 150000 That's crazy. I'm starting to see why he has an appreciative audience yet remains under the radar. Everybody wants one. There's not a wait list because there's nothing to wait for. I'm not used to being told no. Pleasure doing business with you. I need another painting. This thing's supposed to be a front. That means low profile. He's a talented artist. And when you make big sales, you have the power to control the narrative. You giving interviews today, Rembrandt? I don't want anybody to know about me. When you make art from a truthful place, people find out something about you. I knew that money laundering was a crime. But murder? You know, I'm not a psycho or anything. I work with artists, trust me. You're not a psycho. Family never leave. You're part of this family now. <gasps> Best internship ever. He makes a call and I go away forever. Now I get you too. He's not going to let you out of this. Whatever happens, whatever anybody says, I'm just making art. Um, Where could we see it? Well, I think 
I don't know. I think it's coming to movie theaters, but I don't know when, and I'm not sure it's said. But if I see anything, I'll give an update. Okay. Amid a climate of heightened political tension and controversial statements, U.S. Republican Laura Bobbitt of Colorado drew shock criticism during a House debate over defense appropriations Wednesday. Specifically, Bober aimed, at, aimed Assistant Secretary of Defense for Readiness, Sean Skelly, <coughs> a high-ranking transgender official at the Pentagon. Bobert introduced an amendment to reduce Shelley's sal Shelley salary to a mere $1. Oh. Arguing that Shelley was failing at her job and a symbol of wokeism. In her remarks, Bobert, Bobert went as far as to misgender Shelley, offensively asserting this delusional man, thinking he is a woman, embodies and espouses the wokeism that's causing significant harm to our military readiness and troop morale. I so fervently hope she's not going to be elected again. I mean, it was a squeaker for her last what election. What if she gets the McCarthy seat? Oh, I doubt it. Well, who knows? It's a circus there, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, and for one more story for right now, Shelley Swain, a 26-year-old member of the Jefferson County Democratic Executive <coughs> Committee, is looking to become Alabama's first transgender state representative. She's actually made history as the first out transgender candidate, according to Teen Vogue, a official results reported by the Birmingham Times. Swain secured 21.45% of the vote share in a seven, um, in a seven candidate uh, race. The district encompasses parts of Birmingham, no one outright won the election, so a runoff will take place on October 24th. Swain has received a notable endorsement from LPAC, an organized dedicated to electing LGBT plus women and non-binary vision individuals to political office. So let's hope for her that she gets elected. Okay, Ann, what, what have you got for us? I've got... <clears throat> Interesting stories from North America, um, two involving Canada. <clears throat> Unfortunately, uh, U.S. hate groups have been operating in Canada and causing some transphobia. Uh, the first story involves uh, how Canada's constitution makes it possible for Saskatchewan to trample on LGBTQ 2S plus rights. Mm. And apparently the premier of Saskatchewan is a real uh, transphobe. And um, his name is Scott Moe. And he is going to use this clause, which is called the notwithstanding clause, to force through his anti-trans pronoun mm. policy for schools. And so there are two laws. One is uh, the Canadian Charter for Rights and Freedom which is a great legal achievement enacted in 1982 to protect individual rights. But in this bastion of liberty is a curious provision, the notwithstanding clause that oh. allows a federal or provincial government to violate certain charter protections uh, with relative impunity. So if a government wants to pass a law that tramples on the equality rights of its citizens, for example, the government can invoke the notwithstanding clause to do so. In fact, on the face of it, there's very little um, courts can do if huh. this happens. So he has his government has announced a policy that would require students <clears throat> under the age of 16 to receive parental consent before changing their name or pronouns at school. In response to a legal challenge to his proposed changes, he just announced that he would use what some call <coughs> Canadian Constitution's nuclear option. Mm. So that's just a hint of things that are going on in Canada. Um, eight were jailed across Canada in a coordinated 
um, attack or uh, a coordinated group of LGBTQ rallies um, and there were anti-LGBTQ protesters who were protesting against sex ed. Um, mm. The protests rocked almost 80 cities across Canada <coughs> in a significant escalation of tactics by uh, Canada's anti-trans extremists. Uh, the coordinated protests were dubbed One Million March for Children and they're demanding an end to discussions on sexual orientation and gender equality in Canadian classrooms. Uh, they came as several Canadian provinces have enacted policies that require students to have parental permission oh. to change their preferred name or pronoun used in schools. And shortly after the Federal Conservative Party, and they're really the villains in this, oh. they adopted a series of anti-trans policies at their national convention. Um, CBC reported that counter-protesters numbered roughly double the anti-LGBTQ protest in St. John's, Newfoundland. Really? And Linda and I went to a, a LGBTQ pride march in St. John's, I know, John's, there was about 100 people. It mm -hmm. was fun. Um, was it their first or second? It was like really... There were very few people. Yeah. Very few women. We kept saying, where are the women? <laughs> uh, inclusive sex education has long been a part of school curricula in Canada and has generally enjoyed support of all the major political parties. Um, protests were mostly peaceful. At least four anti-LGBT protesters were arrested um, in front of a provincial legislature so that the protest was rendered unsafe. And this is the good part of the story. Justin Trudeau, who was at the UN General Assembly in New York, and more about that, <coughs> condemned the anti LGBTQ protests in a tweet on X, formerly Twitter. Uh, let me make one thing very clear. Transphobia, homophobia, and biphobia have no place in this country. We strongly condemn this hate and its manifestations, and we stand united <clears throat> in support of 2SLGBTQI+. Uh, 2SL is two-spirit. Lesbian, gay. <laughs> um, Canadians across the country, you are valued and you are valid, he wrote. Um, and then there are the conservatives. <coughs> Party leader Pierre Bolivar did not put out a statement, nor did deputy leader Melissa Lanceman. I'd like to have heard from her because she's an open lesbian who has previously spoken in behalf of LGBTQ rights. Uh, Alberta Teachers Association president said the uh, protesters are part of North American wide movement fomenting hatred against people using misinformation and lies. Oh. Um, and there are a few provinces that are outliers. In many cities, the anti LGBTQ protesters were officially condemned by mayors and school boards. Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow, who has publicly supported LGBTQ rights since the 80s, issued a strong statement condemning the protests. The city of Whitehorse, Yukon, <laughs> also issued a statement in advance of the protests condemning its bigotry. However, Premier of New, Br New Brunswick, uh -oh. Blaine Higgs, who was the first to introduce a parental consent policy for trans students, joined the protesters in front of the provincial legislature in Federation. BC oh. Conservative Party And I leader, was going to move there. Huh? I thought of moving to New Brunswick. Well, I don't advise it at the moment. Also, it's pretty cold. BC Conservative Party leader went further in a statement on the protests. While he says he doesn't officially support the protests, if his party wins next year's election, he promised to cancel the province's sex ed curriculum and implied he would ban trans girls oh, from schools. Oh, for <coughs> On the whole, though, it's, you know, the protests weren't successful. Mexico, more North America news. Um, Thruples are in the news. Love of Three, 
A court will decide if there could be marriages of more than two in Mexico. Um, they, and so uh, the complainants intend to reconfigure the uh, situation of marriage and cohabitation so that they can become legally recognized multiple unions. Um, the, the court is... It's a trio? Thruple. Thruple. <laughs> They're a thruple, but they want polyamory generally. Right. And so um, it's before the courts. There are two provisions in the Constitution that talk about marriage between a man and a woman. One is that, and the other is two people. And so uh, the complainants are seeking to overturn oh. that, those particular provisions. Uh, do the, to the, and the Supreme Court turned it down. And so now um, the court that originally held up the ruling against its will in uh, Puebla, <coughs> Puebla um, said, come on, you got to decide about this. So the court has taken it up again. Uh, due to the complexity of the case, the first collegiate civil court in Puebla insisted <coughs> in August that the highest court resolve the issue on its merits. Mm. And so they're kind of in favor of the thruples mm. and their polyamorous companions. Now, another story from Mexico, is I learned, it's really disturbing. Uh, and I have a picture before you now of uh, Alejandro Romero Siguroa and Emmanuel Romero Cesares, who um, are fighting HIV discrimination in Mexico. They planned their elaborate wedding. Mm. They, their family came from all over Mexico. They get to the place where they're going to get married, and uh, they learn that they're barred from marrying because both are HIV positive. Really? Apparently, there's a uh, provision in Mexican law that says if you have any um, dangerous condition or that it can be transmitted, including diabetes, I was thinking. I mean, but anyway, if you have one of those conditions, you can't get married. But if you both have it, it seems. They both have it, but no, it doesn't. Mm. On their wedding day, they discovered they were ineligible. Um, the local judge told them it would be impossible for them to marry. For reason, the civil code in the, of the state of Puebla, Puebla again, <laughs> forbade anyone from getting married if they carry a hereditary or contagious disease. Hmm. So hereditary would be diabetes, right? Lots uh, of things. I mean, they think breast cancer. I mean, you know. Cesares and Cigaroa are both HIV positive, and they indicated on mandatory health forms submitted to the registrar as mm. much. Puebla wasn't alone in barring people living with HIV from getting married. Nine other states across Mexico have laws barring people from HIV from getting married. Mm. It's incredible. Chiapas, Durango, Guanajuato, Guerrero, mm. Nueva Leon, Oaxaca, Querétaro, Quintana Roo, and Sinaloa, and several other states People with HIV can only get married if their partner signs a document um, that they, ha that they have um, been informed. Where uh, That ha applies in some provinces, but in others, oh. the marriage rights of people with HIV are entirely at the whim of local judges. Well, they'll have to change venue, obviously. They'll have to change countries. Well, some countries say you can do it as long as you're open about it. Yes, but these people are petitioning to change the law. Okay. And I think that's more... Um, <laughs> but in the meantime... Well, okay. in, in, in Mexico, the government provides PrEP um, for free in clinics in major cities. So if you go to hospitals in Mexico City, you can get PrEP for free. But if you do, you can face stigma. Uh, the stigma against the virus also explains why these laws have persisted despite falling infection rates and a growing understanding that HIV can be controlled with proper treatment. While those efforts were unsuccessful for this couple, uh, they, they contacted the lawyer immediately um, and became proactive in fighting this. It's been unsuccessful. Um, 
but they're able to file a suit in federal court seeking an order to allow them to marry. Um, they've also been in contact with a friend who's involved with the newspaper and they're publicizing it widely and hoping for some um, progress on the, if everybody knows about this law, it's crazy. <coughs> um, following up on the Nigeria case where 200 people were arrested in what authorities say was a wedding, 69 people uh, have been freed on bail. Um, remember the gay wedding I reported on it? Uh, they were arrested last month. Right. Um, the court in Wari ruled on Tuesday that those being held would be free after posting um, 520 pound bail. I don't mm. Uh, state prosecutors opposed the move. The, de the move. The de detainees did not appear in court, but they're also required to register once once a month until their next hearing. Huh. So, cross dressing is not legal, but tends to be socially unacceptable. The legislature we know about the 2014 law against homosexuality in Nigeria. So that's the news there. Now let's go to Europe if there's okay. time. And you need to be, re this could be your last story for now. Oh, I have so many European stories. All right, I'll tell you quickly about this LGBTQI protesters in Vilnius, Lithuania, who were harassed by marginal groups and the police stood by and didn't intervene. Oh. Protests aiming to support the proposal to highlight the need for inclusive education Education is really a flashpoint in all these stories. It was scheduled by the National LGBTQ Rights Organization, LGL, which is um, the Vilnius civil you know, gay group. There, it was scheduled to take place. The permit was coordinated with the uh, Vilnius municipality and police. Uh, counter protest by a group of traditional family value supporters Jeez. took place um, in the same venue at 12 when the uh, L gay group was supposed to meet. Um, the first protest, the anti-LGBT people didn't stop their protest. So uh, it was joined by more forces only to interrupt the LGL uh, protest and harass peaceful protesters. Hmm. Police were there. The LGBT protesters called for help, and the police stood by. An activist says, it was a humiliating experience with numerous other public figures, human rights defenders, and scholars agreed that the, event, the events of September 28 ended in a total failure of authorities to secure the freedom of speech and peaceful assembly. As LGBTI human rights situation deteriorates in Lithuania, the LGBTQ activist group seeks to consolidate support in order to defend its rights, restore its fundamental freedoms, and use available legal remedies. I mean, it looks really rough in Lith Lithuania. Lithuania. Right? I have much more. I know. So I'll go through these, and if you'll have time to go through other stories. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you want to prioritize them. But. <laughs> <coughs> a California infectious disease doctor specializing in the care of LGBT community has been arrested and charged with sexually assaulting at least nine former male patients over a five-year period. Prosecutors announced on Thursday Dr. William Thompson, 56, of Huntington Beach, was arrested on Wednesday at his medical offices in nearby Newport Beach. He was charged with eight felony counts of sexual penetration by means of fraudulent representation of professional purpose, three felony counts of sexual battery by fraud, and two felony counts of forcible oral copulation. So. Now, this is one of Anne and my favorite shows, which is The Morning Show. Oh. And it has returned for its anticipated third season. <coughs> it's, 
it was clear that Reese Witherspoon's Bradley Jackson and Juliana Margulies's Laura Peterson had parted ways following their relationship in season two. However, The Advocate has an exclusive clip from the upcoming uh, TV series that proves the chemistry that brought the iconic classic on-air personalities together is still rolling. Mm-hmm. Offering hope for more of a queer woman storyline. So we've only seen part of it. We haven't seen all of it. Yeah, we don't have Apple TV. Yep, so we um, watch at different people's houses. <laughs> <clears throat> In a quietly remarkable moment on a bustling Tuesday evening, Speaker Nancy Pelosi made a surprise appearance at a gay bar um, that has become a popular hotspot for locals and visitors alike in a short time since it's been open, situated in the heart of Washington, D.C., Logan Circle Community, the little gay pub, also known as LGP, has earned a reputation as a beloved and welcoming space, known for its ornate bathroom, a social media sensation. Owners Dusty Martinez and Benjamin Gander and Dito Sevilla opened the trendy bar in March, and here's a picture of Nancy Pelosi in the bar waving at everybody. That's right. Devoni Jare Johnson, a black trans woman who was experiencing homelessness, was fatally shot by a security guard at a Ralph's grocery store in Los Angeles. She was in her late 20s. Her death and her identity are just now being widely acknowledged. Police said she confronted the guard and was wielding a fire extinguisher and then a screwdriver, according to the Beverly Press, a neighborhood news outlet. But Devon, Devoni's family contended that she was not the aggressor and has been demanding more investigation into her <coughs> So. Sounds fishy to me. It, it always sounds fishy to me. U.S. Representative Paul Gosar of Arizona, one of the most mega of mega Republicans, went on an outrageous and homophobic rant against General Mark Milley chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, um, accusing him, Millie, of sodomy promoting. So there's a charming. Uh, <coughs> because of his stance. On um, the military mm -hmm. and women with abortion, so, you know, if they're stationed in a place where there's no abortion, the military will pay for them to go to a state that has <coughs> an abortion. That has abortion. So, you know, there's that whole thing. And then transgender stuff. And, and then Trump um, said Millie should be executed. Exactly. So. We're in such great times here. Mm -hmm. On a good note, though, uh, Megan Rapino has cultivated over her micro international career um, a legacy of, um, you know, fighting for more pay for women and uh, LGBTQ stuff and feminist stuff. So uh, she has two World Cup titles and an Olympic gold medal. But the 38-year-old has never been satisfied with sporting achievements. <coughs> the midfielder from California has become an inf influential campaigner a philanthropist, a fashion icon, and an advocate of equal rights across our society. So that's a good claim, isn't it? Yeah. You know. A district in Florida <coughs> has removed <coughs> all box books <coughs> with LGBT plus characteristics, themes, and storylines mm -hmm. from libraries available to elementary and middle school students. A document from the Charlotte County school district obtained by the advocacy group Florida Freedom to Read directs librarians in the district to remove from their <coughs> 1978 when um, and to remove their libraries and media centers of all books 
with references to LGBT characters and themes. And a hundred students walked out of class at Great Oak High School in Temacula, Temachula? Temacula? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> On Friday to protest a wave of anti-LGBT plus policies implemented by the local school board despite warnings that they would be uh, punished and thrown out of school and whatever if they went. But they did anyway, so good for them. <clears throat> Efforts by a group of clergy members to shut down a drag show in upstate New York have failed, leading to an outpouring of support for the 22 plus, 21 plus event. Pastor Tim Lindsay of Harvest Christian Fellowship in Albion, New York, initially asked organizers to cancel this. When they didn't, uh, Lindsay wrote an open letter co-signed by 23 other local clergy members and published it online. Oh. I've been to Albion. Have you? What's it near, Albany? I uh, don't remember. We took the bus from Buffalo. It stopped school. in Albion. <laughs> we went to Albion to do charitable work with the grape pickers. And for my last story, it turns out that something very excited happened. Excited or exciting? Exciting happened. Um, and it's um, <clears throat> the first rainbow flag used to celebrate LGBTQ plus pride has been found and is back in San Francisco. It's on display at the GLBT Historical Society Museum just in time for Pride Month. For years, it was thought to have been lost. And this is the very first one. And I think they found it in the closet in the back uh -huh. of a bar, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Showing its bright colors is now protected behind an acrylic panel. The first ever rainbow flag is a manifestation of freedom. It was created by Gil Gilbert Baker in 1978 when activist Harvey Milk asked him to come up with a symbol for the LGBT community. So that's good news. I'm glad they found it. Um, I'm going to skip the Pope, who's been asked by some retro cardinals to um, make a decision about where he stands about gay people. Um, which they don't feel he has really done, and they want him to condemn, I suppose, uh, LGBTQ people. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. It's and, time for me. Well, I have a follow-up on the flag story. Do you? Uh-huh. Uh, it will put my stories out of order. But let me tell you, the original rainbow flag was created by Gilbert Baker, as right. Linda just said, in 1978 to celebrate members of the gay and lesbian movement. It was initially made up of eight colored stripes stacked on top of each other uh, to represent a rainbow, a symbol of hope. Right. But now each color was given a specific meaning, pink for sex, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, turquoise for magic, indigo for serenity, and violet for spirit. Nice. <clears throat> a year later, the pink and turquoise stripes were dropped owing to a shortage of pink fabric at the time <laughs> and legibility concerns, resulting in the six-color rainbow flag now most commonly used. And here it is. Uh-huh. The well, six colors. Mm -hmm. But uh, if I may continue with my stories in order. Um, you may. Okay. Uh, this is Europe, and I have a series of good news stories. Um, the first is, and this is accompanied by a picture, this is Stephanos Kasalakis, 35, and he has distinguished himself because he's been elected to lead Greece's leftist party in a historic first. Um, he's a Greek businessman. He was elected to the largest opposition party 
in Greece on Sunday, becoming the first out gay leader of a political party in the country's history. Isn't he new to the country, too, or something? No, he uh, studied in the U.S. I'll tell uh -huh. you the whole thing. He's in line. <laughs> he could become the, Greece's first gay prime minister. Uh -huh. uh, he's married to Tyler Macbeth, a nurse he met while living in the U.S. Uh, he mentioned Macbeth during his acceptance speech to uh, supporters on Sunday in the opposition party. Um, marriage equality is not recognized in Greece. It isn't? No, and while the pair, pair married in the U.S., their relationship will be considered a civil partnership. He promised to reform, reform the country's anti-LGBTQ plus laws if elected. Uh, his campaign platform is very progressive. Oh. Um, <clears throat> he, it was a tight race, and he was credited uh, for his use of social media that led to his victory against oh. a more uh, established oh. candidate. He was born in Greece. Is he a young fellow? 35. Uh -huh. But came to the U.S. to study at Phillips Academy Prep School and eventually graduate from Wharton Business School. Oh. During this period, he spent time working on then-Senator Joe Biden's 2008 presidential campaigns. He later worked as a trader with Goldman Sachs before founding his own shipping company, Swift Bulk. Oh. Uh, while some welcomed the election results as a breath of fresh air for the party, others took a less optimistic view following a contentious election that they say could create deep schisms within the party. That's baloney. It's just naysayers. It's my editorial opinion. I'm always leery of <coughs> liberals with who work on Wall Street. <laughs> but, you know. He's a business magnet. Uh -huh. There you go. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, more good news. Amsterdam HIV cases dropped to almost <coughs> zero after a prep scheme. New cases have dropped... Um, in the, because of the preventive drug PrEP. Uh, according to figures in the Dutch AIDS Fund, there were only nine cases of the virus in Amsterdam in 2022, down from 66 people in 2021. <clears throat> it claimed that 120, the organization uh, Dutch AIDS Fund claimed that 128 were diagnosed in 2019, and since 2010, the number of new infections in the Dutch capital, in the Dutch capital, has fallen by 95 percent. Not bad. With the goal to reach zero new HIV transmissions in the city by 2026, the city of Amsterdam reportedly provided an extra budget of in 2019 to make PrEP, which we know is the medication to uh, uh -huh. reduce viral load, more widely accessible including to people like sex workers who may have a higher risk. In February this year, it was announced that 50, uh, 50, this is sort of interesting and I don't know what to think of it. In February this year, it was announced that a 53-year-old man from Germany became the fifth person worldwide to be cured of HIV. Hmm. Diagnosed with the virus in oh, 20... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, yeah. Diagnosed with the virus in 2008, he received stem, st stem cell transplants in 2013 to treat leukemia. I heard of this. I, uh, and has ended his HIV treatment without relapsing. <coughs> he is now the third person to have been cured of the virus through stem, stem cell transplants, according to researchers. Well, there you go. More good news, in my view. I'd like to show you a picture now of Donatella Versace. <laughs> who slams the Italian government's anti-LGBTQ policies at La Scala in Milan. Um, gay rights groups ha in Italy have praised her for speaking out against the government's anti-gay anti policies in a heartfelt and personal speech received while receiving a fashion award. Our government is trying to take away people's rights to live as they wish. She said on Saturday night, <clears throat> citing in particular the government policy <coughs> that allows only the biological parent in same-sex couples to be officially recognized. 
<coughs> They're restricting our freedom, she said. We must all fight for freedom in a time that still sees trans people suffering terrible violence, a time when children of same-sex couples <coughs> are not considered their children, a time when minority voices are attacked, attacked by new laws. Um, <coughs> the speech received a standing ovation from the fashion crowd, uh, where Versace received a humanitarian award. Gay rights activists praise her, praised her for clearly yes. challenging the government's actions. <coughs> Sorry, but called on the entire fashion community to do more. <coughs> Donatelli Versace was the first person in Italy to be so clear and explicit in the face of the government's homophobic policies. <coughs> That's the water. <coughs> said a gay activist. She is one of the most important names in fashion, and I invite others to follow her example. I can do the Cardinals while you. <laughs> you can do what? I can do the Cardinals while you. Sort okay, of, okay. Thank, while I pull it myself. Yeah. Together. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, we have. A f we went on vacation, and who knows? <coughs> it's not COVID. We tested, but you know, it does have a cough. The Cardinals submitted a five-question, <coughs> or dubia, whatever that is, ahead of the synod of sino Synod. Huh? Synod. Synod, all right. The <coughs> weeks-long meeting to discuss the church's policies, teachings, and beliefs <coughs> in a culturally changing world. They seek a yes or no response to questions related to marriage equality and same-sex unions, women in the priesthood, and who is the ultimate worldly authority of the Catholic Church. The five cardinals who signed the, is it a dubia? Dubia? Yeah, D-U-B-I-A. Dubai. Dubai. What is a Dubai? It's a city in... No, no, this is a, some kind of a, a dubia, it's some kind of like council or something, or a group of cardinals signed the dubia, not a country. I don't know. I don't that, either. It's a city anyway. No, but this, this is not a city. Look, look up <laughs> There's dubia. There's no dubia that I've heard in Catholic well, look up liturgy. A, look up a dubia. Um, Catholic Church. Anyway. The cardinals who signed the dubia <laughs> are German Cardinal uh, Walter Brandmuller, 94, American Cardinal Raymond Burke, 75, <coughs> Chinese, Chinese Cardinal Zen Zi Kuin, 90, and uh, Guinean Cardinal Robert Sarah, 78, explained their intent in a notification to Christ's faithful released today. The Cardinal said they had asked for this from the Pope for clarification on all of these issues uh, for the upcoming Synod. <coughs> Synod. <laughs> Synod. I'm not Catholic, I don't know. But that's the response, that his responses do not provide Definitive answers. The groups resubmitted the questions in a yes or no <coughs> format. So, did you find out what it was? Yes. Okay. It's a plural for a dubium. Aha. Uh -huh. Literally means from the Latin doubts. But another way of translating it is to see the word meaning questions that seek clarifications. Well, there you go. <coughs> Learn something every day. I know. So, Let's that's a back. dubia. I'd like to go back to uh, Versace, if I could. Okay. <clears throat> besides, and the evil doings of the Italian government, besides blocking recognition of children of same-sex couples, by the way, 33 lesbians have been removed from birth certificates so far in Italy, <clears throat> the right-wing government of the Prime Minister, Giorgio Maloney, is pushing through legislation, making it punishable with prison terms and stiff penalties. A 20, 2004 
law already banned sur surrogacy within Italy. Um, <clears throat> Versace was accompanied by uh, the Democratic lawmaker who drafted legislation expanding anti-discrimination policies in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, <clears throat> in a touching moment, Versace also recalled the day her brother Gianni came out to her. I was 11 years old when my brother Gianni told me he was gay. For me, it changed nothing. I loved him, and I didn't care who he loved, she told the crowd. Mm. <clears throat> my last Europe story involves a clip Okay. for this new film that's hit the Telluride Festival. It's taking it by a storm. All right. It's from Britain, and it's kind of strange, I think. Can we uh, see it? Uh, it's December 22nd release. Okay. One night in his near-empty block, tower block in contemporary London, Adam has a chance encounter with the mysterious neighbor, Harry, which punctuates the rhythm of his everyday life. Um, Adam is preoccupied, and as a relationship develops between them, Adam is preoccupied with memories of his past and finds himself drawn to the suburb suburban town where he grew up and the childhood home where his parents appear to be living, just as they were on the day they died 30 years before. Hey, that's cool. And here's the recommendation from the review I read. While the film tantalizing hints, tantalizingly hints at mysteries, it primarily delves into themes of grief, self-acceptance, and the enduring loneliness that can plague the lives of gay men. <clears throat> Early relax reactions from its premiere at the Telluride Film Festival revealed a, a fearless commitment to romance by Scott and Mescal, those are the two actors, promising a passionate and unforgettable portrayal of love. Let's see a clip from All of Us Strangers yeah. now. Hello. Hi. Saw you looking at me from the street. I'm assuming you're not with anyone. Never see you with anyone. This is your mom and dad. Yeah. They died just before I was 12. I'm trying to write about them at the moment. How's it going? Strangely. Hi. Hi. Is this real? Does it feel real? Our boy's back home. Our son. Look at you. You were just a boy. And now you're not. It was a long time ago. Yeah, I don't think that matters. Maybe I didn't treat you quite as good as I should. I've always felt like a stranger in my own family. Maybe I didn't love you. Always scared of something. Quite as often as I go. Always running away. Do you remember? Sorry I never came in your room when you were crying. I never took the time. It's funny, it doesn't take much. You are always on to make you feel the way you felt back there again. Do you think you'd like to be in love with him? I'd always fall in love. This is a new feeling. You and me together. into the world. Pretty good. I have two Asian stories. Okay. One involves a TikToker who was fatally shot uh, as Iraq cracks down on the LGBTQ community. So let's look at a picture of 23-year-old Noor al-Safar um, 
He was a popular Tic Tac personality. Um, he had 370,000 followers Ooh. collectively on Instagram and Tic Tac. He mostly posted short videos showing dresses, hair, and makeup styles, often dancing to music. Following news of the shooting, many posted comments lamenting his death. Some others cheered it, celebrating the man who fired the shot. Mm. Here's a rock for you. The killing comes as a rock cracks down on LGBTQ expression and moves to criminalize it in law. While being queer is not explicitly banned under current Iraqi legislation, LGBTQ people are often targeted under vague morality clauses in the penal code. Mm -hmm. code. He faced online abuse. Um, I'm not transgender and I'm not gay. I don't have other tendencies. I'm only a cross-dresser and a model, he said. Um, he identified as male who worked as a, a male who worked as a model and makeup artist. Um, and we've been talking about how Iraq is moving um, in bad directions for LGBTQ people. He said, "I'm Even cautious. Worse. <laughs> I'm ca yeah, I'm cautious, but not afraid." He said uh, about TikToker's appearance. He'd been threatened, uh, and as I mentioned last time, well, the new law has been proposed that explicitly criminalized same-sex, gay, gay sex, transgender expression, and other forms of LGBTQ <sighs> conduct. If adopted, it would punish same-sex relations with the death penalty or life in prison, punish promoting homosexuality with a minimum sentence of seven years, and criminalize imitating women with up to a three-year sentence. And you remember, that um, I reported last time that Iraq's media regulator in August banned the term homosexuality across all traditional and social media platforms, demanding that the term sexual deviance be used instead. One more quick thing, Turkey President Erdogan, bothered by the LGBTQ colors at the UN headquarters. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at those oh. colors in the UN headquarters. And it wasn't the LGBTQ flag at all, but no. the, the flag of the la the last development project that the UN was launching. Can't use rainbows at all anymore. <laughs> I know, rainbows Rainbow are Rainbow colors, attack. you know? Well, crazy. Jeez. So anyway. Um, well, I'm sorry about the coughing spell. I'll try to do better in the future. <laughs> no worries. Everybody has a cough once in a while. <laughs> Take care, and remember to always resist. resist.